Hey everyone, Arctic here, and welcome to my first Minecraft build video. Today I want to show you a modern style cliff house. The house consists out of two floors. On the upper floor you have the living area and the entry area. It's built out of quartz onto like the cliff. So you have a little bit of contrast between the clean stone and the quartz. On the upper floor is also an office themed room and a bedroom. In the basement you have some stuff for your survival Minecraft experience. You have some storage, crafting areas, finances and an enchantment table that sits above a cave and it's surrounded with glass so it looks like you are standing on the cave while you're enchanting. If you want to build this build yourself, search for a cliff um, where you have space for an old shape and uh, where you have a nice view. I think that's one of the important things. So you start to build off with, um, with a 17 blocks long quartz block beam um, that you just connect back to your cliff. Um, so you have this L shape. So also if you look out for a place for this build, look out for a place where you can place this L shape because otherwise you will have to remove a lot of stone and this could be quite annoying. After you build your initial, um, the initial shape, you just add another layer of quartz block to it, um, so it's two blocks wide. Then you build five blocks up and repeat the shape that you already have, but just five blocks in there. So now you have um, between these two shapes uh, a space of four blocks high and you're just filling it in with quartz, uh, quartz slabs uh, as you see here, creating a diagonal pattern. On the other side you fill in this diagonal pattern on one side and leaving the other side out. And after you've created this pattern you do it also on the other side but this time you go only downwards and this also uh, is showing you how long you build the shorter outside. Like you build it till um, the diagonal line touches, touches uh, the lower L shape. And then you fill in also this area with uh, quartz blocks. After that, you add light emitting blocks to uh, the upper L. Um, I've gone for sealer turns because I think they look the most modern, but you can also use a glowstone um, or other light emitting blocks um, as you wish, as long as they look good in your texture pack. After that, you uh, start to add another layer of quartz blocks uh, to the lower L shape. Um, yeah. So it's three wide. And you start to add glass panes. Um, I've gone for clear glass, uh, but you can also use like uh, light gray glass or, um, or other colors as you like. You can experiment a little bit with it. Um, a light gray can look good, maybe white even. Um, so you have to experiment a little bit how it looks in your texture pack and how it looks with your shaders. If you're done with the glass, you can start now mining out the area for the rooms of the upper floor. If you want to rebuild this build um, perfectly, uh, there is a floor plan in the video description. It's a simple PDF. And I, so I don't have to say the measurements of all the rooms. Um, I think it's easier for you if you have a floor plan you can look at and um, then build after that if you want to rebuild this build. One block by one block, basically. So yeah, um, you remove this area for the main room 
and fill in the floor with dark oak planks. Um, I've gone for dark oak planks because I think the darker color gives a good contrast to the white facade um, that you have with the quartz. After that, you start to mark out areas um, for other rooms and for the area where we will put some, uh, some green. You then mine out a little bit more, creating the entry area where you will have your doors that will lead outside and where you will have a door that will lead to uh, stairs that will go downwards into the basement. While you hollow out the area, you leave a three high, one block wide stone, like a stone beam over the entry area. Now you have to go outside again and add to the roof because maybe there's not enough stone above your area that you've hollowed out, so you add a roof out of quartz slabs. This way you can add another ceiling block under this. And after you've done like the roof, you have also to add like under the whole thing we've built already some quartz slabs so you don't see like the floor from the outside. That's why you do that. And it also looks symmetrical on the top and on the bottom if you do it the same way. If you watched till here, why don't you subscribe and leave a like to see more from me in the future. Now you want to make the entry area look a little bit better. So we move the clean stone here and start to add quartz pillars. Because if you add a lot of quartz pillars next to each other, they actually start to look like wallpaper, which is a really great thing. And it just looks good in most modern builds, I would say. With the entry area now looking a little bit better, you can start to add a white ceiling. I've gone for white smooth quartz blocks because they still have the same white as you know the normal quartz blocks or quartz pillars but still looking different. This is the major advantage of quartz blocks above uh, white concrete. With white concrete you had like only one block. With quartz you have different blocks that look different but all have the same color which is actually really great if you want to build anything with that. So you now create a ceiling out of smooth quartz blocks, but you don't build it totally to the other side. You want to create a little barrier between the clean stone and your ceiling. And you fill this area with end rods, giving a modern lightning to the entry area. Now we can start to mine a little bit more away, creating first a little courtyard where we'll later add a little bit of green. And then we move an area where we'll have a hallway-like room. It's not really, we will not close up this hallway, but it's like a hallway to the other main rooms of this build. Now we can add the quartz pillars, as we have already done in the entry area, to the other side of the room, creating again a wallpaper-like wall. And now you may have also to look how you have to set the ceiling here. Um, so you already have always have like a white ceiling at the white walls, and you have a clean stone ceiling at the walls that are out of clean stone. So it's rather simple to um, to see where you have to add which ceiling. As we have already done at the entry area, we will also add entrance to this hallway as a light source because they are a great way of modern lightning. The only thing left to do now is to add some floor, uh, make finish up the walls, um, mark your mark the position of the other two rooms of this area with stores and you also have to maybe remove another layer of stone as I had to do it because I forgot the measurements. <laughs> After the hallway is done, you can now start to build the entry to this house. For that, you place two doors there and then build a staircase going up. There's another option, you can also build it through the hill to the other side and build an entry there. 
but for this build I've gone for the staircase option. After you've built the staircase, I highly recommend removing a lot of dirt on the hill because most of the time dirt doesn't look that good and every dirt that is around the staircase should be um, removed and replaced with clean stone or any other stone you want you can be a, little, a bit more creative here and maybe uh, add some other stones so it looks more detailed. You want to add light now to the entry so it's not so dark. For that you create a small notch and into that notch you put slabs and then add a light, light emitting block above that. You now want to finalize the entry for that. You add a little bit of rain protection, a little bit of glass above the entry, and then start to add stone bricks to the stairs and make it just stone brick stairs. With the stairs finalized, you then add a small window that looks into the courtyard and into the main area so you can look into the main area from the stairs. Now comes this part I like the most about this build and it's this small green area so that we will add like basically in every room. And for this main area it's this courtyard. And in this courtyard you want to build a green scenery. So you can really be creative here, add some water, add some grass, flowers, uh, maybe bamboo. Um, yeah, so you can build totally free what you want here. So you just want to add a green scenery. So it looks like you have a natural green courtyard in there. Um, I will show you also a picture now. Uh, because I've done it two times and I think the second time it looks better. I don't have it on video, so uh, you can see it there. And yeah, just be creative. You can be free with whatever you want to do here and make it look green. You now want to maybe prepare a little bit for the stairs that will go downwards into the basement. For that, you will add some stone bricks um, under the store so we don't have to touch the store anymore and um, it's already done so we can finalize like this upper floor. So with this out of the way you can now start to add the bedroom. For that you can hollow out the area behind the right wall in the hallway. Again here if you need measurements to rebuild it like one block to one block there's a pdf in the video descriptions where you have all the measurements for all rooms. So you hold out everything and then you add dark oak planks to the floor. The walls will be out of quartz pillars and the ceiling will be smooth quartz blocks. In the right corner of the bedroom you create a wardrobe with barrels and you use ant rods so you have a little bit of light there. When you're almost done with the room, on the left side you now add a kind of window. It not will not go outside, but rather will look on some plants that you planted there on some water. Um, yeah, so this is a way to give a room that's inside a hill some nature, so it doesn't look so so boring or so claustrophobic. So you give the room a little bit, but yeah, of, of just some green, so it yeah doesn't look that boring. The last room of the upper floor is the office. You place the office behind the door at the end of the small hallway. And you start this room just like all the other rooms by 
hollowing out uh, the area that you need for the office. You may will get a true like the wall of, of the cliff or the hill you're building in. So you may have to extend the cliff or hill a little bit. So it looks good. For that, you just create, um, create the area of the office and then look on the outside how you can add a little bit to the hill or to the cliff so it doesn't look bad. The walls and the ceiling of the office will be clean stone. And as we already have in the two other rooms, also this room will get a little bit of nature into it. For that, you create a little bit of a bigger window because we want to uh, set the, the office table onto this window. All the interior will be done after we have built all rooms and the basement, so it's like the last step of the whole build. So you create again this little like a panorama or something uh, with a little bit of nature touch because we have here a bigger area to use. I will not only use grass blocks, I will also lose a bit of sand and again the water us in all rooms. To finish off the room, you create a lamp out of ant rods in the right corner of the room and then add a floor out of wooden planks. Um, you can go for whatever color you want here. You can now start to create the basement. Obviously, the first step to do is to create a staircase downwards into the basement. For that, you simply use stone brick stairs. And if you go downwards on the left side of that, you place light emitting blocks. So they only shine like onto one step giving you a modern indirect light. At the opposite side of the staircase, you create a light emitting wall. That is quite simple. You just place light emitting block to the ceiling and then set in front of them stone slabs in an alternating pattern, as you see in the video. And I think it's giving a really nice light and a good touch and if you go downwards the stairs, it looks really good. When you're done with the staircase, now you can start with hollowing out the area for the basement. For that, as already said, I think two or three times in this video, you can look at the, into the video description. There are four plans for that. Following, you start to create a simple pattern with polished underside on this on the wall on the side of the staircase as you see here and then start to fill in the floor um, as shown also in the diagrams with uh, anesite slabs don't forget to create a socket on the right um, out of anesite blocks which is five long as you see here and then you hold out the area between the inner side blocks on the wall and in the lower corners you place uh, sea legends. The remaining floor area you fill out with wooden planks. I've gone for dark oak wooden planks here. With floor complete you now start to create uh, the first wall out of quartz here. Um, again, we are going for the same seam that we already have in the upper floor. A little bit of clean stone and uh, some quartz. But here we change a little bit the, um, the smooth quartz and the block of quartz because now um, some parts of the wall will be out of smooth quartz blocks and the ceiling will be out of uh, quartz, normal quartz blocks. The quartz ceiling will be over the area where you have dark oak planks 
and over the area where you have just any side slabs, you place no quartz ceiling. Here you place stone slabs. If you not already have hollowed out the area for the window in the basement, it's time to do now. You hollow out this area and maybe you hit the outside of the clip. So as, um, as always, here you have to do some correcting on the cliff, making it maybe a little bit bigger and making sure it still looks natural. With the area ready, you can now start to create the frame for the window. For that, you place quartz blocks all around the window area and place one line of sea lurchin lamps for the light of the window. With the frame done, you can now create a diagonal cut of quartz block wall. Um, you know, we have the same seam again here as in the upper floor. And then you simply fill in the area with glass panes. Here you can um, be creative again with the color. I've gone for clear glass because I think it's the most neutral in this in this area, but you can experiment a little with what color you like most. Now comes the most important part for this window area, and that is to create a tunnel to the outside, so you can look inside and look outside. For this tunnel, we aim more to do like a cave design, because a tunnel looks too man-made, looks just out of place here. So you try to make this tunnel as irregular and as non-man-made as possible. For that, you have to build a little bit on the cliff on the outside, maybe, but also the inside, like of this tunnel of this of this cave, has to be irregular. So you start to add um, with clean stone, clean stone steps and slabs. You can really create this uh, cave feeling that we are going for here. It may take you some time to um, to do this. Um, you know, t take your time, look at it again and again until you are really satisfied with what you've done here. You can also go now, also go with some different materials. Probably here at the end of the video, um, I will show some some ways to add a little bit more of atmosphere and a bit of more of details. Uh, to some parts of the build and also to like this part of the build. With the window done, you now can do the remaining walls that you have to do. For that, you place again here smooth quartz blocks, and you also create uh, some some niche, uh, one for some crafting uh, some crafting stuff around. Uh, armor and such things and then you will also uh, as the last part add uh, the enchanting area i was not happy with this niche area several times so i changed it over and over again and i'm showing it here because i think that i want to encourage you to um, also change your bolts over and over again because I think this is a way you can really get better. And as I watch this footage of me, I already get new ideas over and over again for this build. So how I could have done things better and so on. So um, changing your build over and over again is, I think, a part um, of, of Minecraft building that is quite important because I think this is a way, a good way to learn new building techniques and starting to get better at building. The last part of the basement comes before we go to the interior part and that is to create this area for the enchanting table. For that you create this niche that is 3 by 3 basically 
and around it has a smooth quartz walls with two by three um, uh, free areas where you will place bookcases. With the bookcases in place, you can now start to hollow out the area below this where we will put the enchantment table and this area should look like a cave so you want to build it irregular, make it look natural, place some light emitting blocks in it so you can really look into it and it's not too dark and then you can um, yeah be free what you want to do here. I've added some water, added some uh, some grass, um, put some put some gravel down. So yeah, it really looks like a small cave when you are standing above this. That is like what you want to go for. To finish the enchantment area, you place glass blocks above this cave and add an enchantment table. To add a little bit more depth to the stone ceiling here, you add stone slabs to it and you leave one border around it clear, so it looks a little bit more interesting. Now you can add furnaces to the niches we have created before. Here you go with different furnaces so it looks more interesting and now you really see how this bottom light really comes out great. You now create a flower box on this little podium we have created. Therefore you use uh, grass blocks and then trapdoors and then you add just the flowers you like. So it looks a little bit more pretty here. With the basement almost done, you now can add interior to the basement. For that, you add some crafting tables or some areas where you can craft different things. And then you add some storage to the room. And you may also have to add some lights to the room so it's not that dark and no mobs will spawn here. For decoration I've used a cartography table and a map because for me a map on the wall is like always a small sign that this is like your Minecraft home now and yeah so I've decided to add a map to the wall. If you have not already seen it there is dripping water into our basement and this is because above us is the courtyard so from there it drops down and to fix this you just replace the block where you see the dripping with a quartz slab and this way it doesn't drip anymore. With the basement done the only thing left to do is to add some furniture. You probably want to go with a couch that looks outside um, with some carpet under it and um, maybe add on a bookshelf um, to the wall. A small note here, I've gone for quite simple furniture. Um, if you want, you can do a little bit more, but I think for this house, simple furniture is definitely enough. With the other area that is left then, in the upper area, um, you probably want to add some, uh, some, some area with an eating table or something like that. I, I've gone for that. Um, you can also do, do something else. On the hallway that leads to the other two rooms on the upper area, I recommend to just decorate the walls. I've done that with um, just some simple pictures, two small ones on the left side and one bigger one on the right side.
after that um, you decorate the office themed room with a desk and uh, something that looks like a small computer therefore you use a pressure plate, a stone pressure plate and a small picture so it looks like a screen and a keyboard then adding a flower pot or some more decorations and a lamp because in the room there's not enough light and uh, mobs called spawn which obviously you don't want then you build a little cabinet with some barrels and under chest and some slabs and you're basically done with your office Now you only have to place uh, the beds in the bedroom and decorate it a little bit. I've gone for two red beds, some carpets around the beds and a picture on the wall. Um, make sure that you place under the beds wall blocks so it looks like the, bed is, the beds are standing on a carpet, on a bigger carpet. You reach the end of the video. In the background I will do some final detailing that I don't think need any more explanation. If you liked the video, why don't you leave a like and if you want to see more in the future from me, you should subscribe to the channel. If you have any criticism in positive or negative way, tell it in the comments please so I can make better videos in the future. I hope you will have a great time the next few days and I hope to see you here on my channel again.